Hey up everyone, Magpie Gaming here. I hope you're all doing well. In this video, I'm going to go through the latest changes to Escape from Tarkov for you guys and girls. Uh, a lot of changes recently. I'm trying to keep up with them the best I can. If I was to make a video every time they made a change, I'd be doing about five videos a day. So you probably already know about some of these changes, but I like to give it a day or so and then just round up everything into one short video for you guys. So first of all, they've added Alpha Container for Purchase at Level 2 Peacekeeper. They have upped the quantity of items to spawn in Plastic Weapons cases so that is the uh, the short thin rectangular ones it'll be the deeper uh, gray ones and then you've got the really big green ones the all of those have had the chances for items to spawn upped on those they've lowered the stress resistance required for skiers flint quest it did used to be eight but it's only six now they've upped sell price for several items including heavy armor video cards dry fuel etc and bs ammo is now back to purchase as a barter from some of the traders so nothing too heavy or over the top there. So the next one they've removed fog based hand grenades from scavs. Now depending on what side of the fence you sit with this that either makes scavs less of a challenge or you're pretty glad that they've got rid of them. If you don't know what the fog is it's a black looking grenade and it has a very short fuse. It has a two second timer so sometimes as a PMC even before the grenade hits the ground it will go off but they are a great little grenade to carry in sort of tight areas where you need a grenade to go off quickly. Obviously with a normal grenade you will hit it bounce around on the floor or whatever and you've got a few seconds to move out of the way with the fog you don't really have that time to move it was a nightmare for some people with the scavs having them personally i haven't come across any scavs that did have them but apparently it, there was a chance for them to spawn on scavs that is now no longer the case whether they spawn on scav bosses and their minions i don't know yet so they've increased the chances of the spawning of the bosses so the chances of them spawning have all been upped for rashala he's been upped to 38 percent glucar has been upped to 43% and Sturman has been up to 39% so when you're going on these maps now you're going to have to take a little bit more care these bosses will be around a lot more often but if you're the type of person that likes to farm these guys then that is good news for you. Killer 6B13M armor will now spawn with 100% chance so whilst they've been sorting out his stun lock issues and if you didn't know what the stun lock was this is where when you would shoot him in a certain part of the body he would freeze he wouldn't fire back he wouldn't move and it made him very very easy to farm that has now been fixed but whilst they've been fixing this they had to remove his armor his armor will now spawn with 100 chance obviously if you manage to get his armor and get it out it is worth a lot of money it is also a very good armor as well if you wanted to use it in another raid and they have upped the 12 by 70 and the 20 by 70 ammo this is the shotgun ammo so all of the shotgun ammo now does more damage ap20 as a lot of people will know is probably the best shotgun gun ammo that there is it can be fairly expensive but it is very very good that will now one tap class 3 armor every single time it will just shred through that with level 4 armor it will shred it nearly all of the time every now and again you will probably have to do two hits but most of the time it will shred it as for level 5 armor i'm not too sure i think the possibility is that you'll need two to three shots to go through that but yes it makes shotguns a lot more relevant in the game now which i like because i do like to use shotguns and obviously all of the ammo now is uh, doing greater damage and the last one we've got is this tweet that Battlestate put out and I'll read this out to you in order to avoid permanent bans temporary bans and other misunderstandings we recommend that you refrain from large and constant distribution of items in raid to other players all this will be regarded as boosting which is prohibited in our game thank you for understanding so basically what they're getting at here is people that constantly go in and give stuff to their teammates now as squads work this doesn't happen very often Every Every now and again your teammate will get downed you might grab their gear take it to the extract for them and then give them that back in the next raid that is fine as long as you are not giving them tons and tons of stuff it is fine that there's no issue with that but what they are getting at here is the rmts now when somebody purchases something from an rmt that then has to be delivered to that person that delivery is done in game and obviously large amounts of stuff is being handed over you'll have expensive items a lot of in-game cash will be handed over so what battlestate are doing right now is they're able to track this they're able to see who's doing it and able to ban them now if for some instance you were giving over large amounts of stuff to teammates in game then you could possibly run the risk of being banned so if you're constantly buying your squad mates loadouts it might be something that you want to refrain from for a bit now i would think that an odd loadout now and again isn't too bad but you've just got to be very careful the other thing to know is that if you do know people that are using rmts and you are going into games with these people where the transfer of items is taking place you will be 
banned too. You run the risk of being banned, you will be classed as fertility in, in that transaction and you will be banned as well. So the overall message is don't cheat and don't be around to those that do cheat if you do know that they are cheating. So just be very, very wary. And that is pretty much it for the changes that over the last few days, ladies and gentlemen. Um, nothing too heavy. I know that a lot of people are moaning about this handing over stuff in raid, but I honestly think that just giving you know a squad bait back his gun and his helmet every now and again isn't going to be an issue as they do say the large and constant distribution of items so i think if you're just giving your mate his gun back and maybe his body armor now and again there's nothing wrong with that and that is it for this video ladies and gentlemen as always thank you very much for watching and listening don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will catch you in the next one take care